to Weekend Breakfast. I'm Miriam Korowa. And I'm Andrew Gagan. Making news this morning. Flood alert. The Lachlan River breaks its banks as the New South, New South Wales town of Forbes is inundated. Also ahead, tax back down. The Prime Minister scraps plans to introduce a GST funding floor. Landslide victory, Jeremy Corbyn re-elected leader of Britain's Labour Party. Finals football, the Western Bulldogs through to the AFL Grand Final for the first time in 55 years. And the Storm book their place in the NRL decider after a thrilling win over Canberra. Hello, thanks for joining us. It's Sunday the 25th of September. Well, to our top stories this morning, and hundreds of people have spent the night in evacuation centres as emergency authorities prepare for major flooding in the New South Wales town of Forbes. For the residents that chose to stay, the State Emergency Service says the flood could be unpredictable and very different to the major event 26 years ago. The Lachlan River is expected to surpass the current record of 10.65 metres, which could make it the worst flooding since 1990. The Federal Minister for Regional Development, Fiona Nash will visit the town today to see firsthand the damage the deluge of water is causing. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has scrapped plans to introduce a GST funding floor just a month after floating the proposal. In a letter seen by the ABC to Liberal backbencher Erica Betts, the PM says the GST issue won't need to be resolved for some years. Senator Abetz confirmed the delay, describing it as a win for several states. The Prime Minister floated an idea in Western Australia and it is an issue that has been expressed by West Australians as well. And so it was appropriate to float the idea, but it does remain an issue that needs to be resolved, not so much by the Federal Government, but by the State Premiers and Chief Ministers Members of Britain's opposition Labour Party have re-elected Jeremy Corbyn as leader. In his victory speech, Mr Corbyn has urged all Labour Party members to unite behind his leadership. The left winger captured almost 62% of the vote among party members, beating his only rival, Owen Smith. Many of his own MPs wanted to force him out because they're convinced he would never lead them to victory in an election. Dozens of people have been killed as the Syrian government increased the pressure on rebel-held Aleppo by stepping up the air assault on the city in the north of the country on Saturday. Syrian government and rebel forces have battled for control of high ground on the outskirts of Aleppo. Rebel-held neighbourhoods of the Syrian city have been enduring what has been described as intense and continuous airstrikes. Rescue workers say they've been indiscriminate and aid workers say they're confronting the worst humanitarian situation since the war began. A manhunt is underway in Washington for the gunman who killed five people in a shopping centre in the United States. Police have released a picture of the gunman who fled the scene armed with a rifle. Four women were shot dead at the Cascade Mall in Burlington and a man who sustained a gunshot wound died later at Seattle Hospital. The FBI is assisting with the investigation and says there's no evidence that further attacks are planned. U.S. President Barack Obama has delivered a moving speech at the opening of the first U.S. National Museum of African American History in Washington. The President and First Lady sat alongside former President George W. Bush, who signed the bill to allow construction in 2003. Mr. Obama said the museum can provide context to the current national debate on the relationship between law enforcement and black communities. My hope is that as people are seeing what's happened in Tulsa or Charlotte on television and perhaps are less familiar with not only the history of the African American experience but also how recent some of these challenges have been, upon visiting the museum may step back and say, I understand. 
Police in the United Kingdom are investigating claims an iCloud account reportedly belonging to the Duchess of Cambridge's sister, Pippa Middleton, has been hacked and private photographs stolen. The Sun reported that it was offered images which it said included shots of the Duchess's children, Prince George and Princess Charlotte. The paper said someone had contacted it asking for £50,000 within 48 hours. The skies over Brisbane lit up last night with another successful river fire fireworks spectacular drawing crowds estimated at close to half a million people. The Australian Army's Tiger and Taipan helicopters were early crowd pleasers, followed by the F-818 Super Hornet which roared above the city. This year more than 11,000 kilograms of fireworks were launched from 18 different locations around the city including six barges and 10 rooftops, all pieced together thanks to 25 pyrotechnicians. Czech diver Mikhail Navratil and Canadian Lizanne Richard both secured their second wins of the Cliff Diving World Series season at the historic Starry Most Bridge in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Navratil lies third overall in the series with two more events upcoming in Japan and the United Arab Emirates. More than 20,000 people showed up to watch divers launch off the 16th century bridge. And thank you for your company here on Weekend Breakfast, still to come. A tense wait in the west. We cross to SES headquarters for the latest on the rising floodwaters and the current evacuation advice. Also ahead, a tournament for true champions. We head to an inspirational sporting event that starts today. And later, it's finals time. We take a look at the big games that have locked in the last two spots for the NRL and AFL finals. Let's take a look at the satellite image. Around the country, a low pressure trough and cold front are triggering rain and thunderstorms over parts of southern Australia. Unstable winds are bringing showers to southern parts of South Australia and a cold front is approaching Western Australia, causing increasing showers. For Queensland, showers and storms over the southeast, clear in the southwest and hot in the north. Cloudy with showers over parts of eastern and central New South Wales and isolated storms over the eastern half of the state. In Victoria, cloudy with gusty showers, heavy at times, possible thunderstorms in the east. Easing gusty showers for Tasmania, clearing in the east. For South Australia, partly cloudy in the east and south with showers, warm and sunny elsewhere. Showers and gusty winds developing in southwest WA, very hot in the north and cooler in the south. For the Territory, isolated thunderstorms and hot in the north, warm in the south. Looking ahead to tomorrow's forecast for the capital cities. Partly cloudy with a chance of showers for Sydney, Adelaide and Darwin. Showers increasing for Melbourne, sunny in Brisbane, a shower or two for Perth and partly cloudy for Canberra and Hobart. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at the front pages of today's newspapers. Queensland Sunday Mail has a headline, Sicko, with a story about Australia's healthcare system. It warns the private healthcare system is becoming unsustainable as hundreds of thousands of middle income earners leave the system because of the high cost. South Australia's Sunday Mail says the family of an Aboriginal inmate involved in an incident in an Adelaide jail are planning national protests vowing to fight for justice. The man is in a critical condition in hospital after he allegedly assaulted prison guards. The Sunday Telegraph focuses on the Cronulla Sharks with the headline Sharknado. Cronulla will take on the Melbourne Storm in next weekend's NRL Grand Final. The Sun Herald looks at a plan to cut opening hours at service New South Wales centres. The paper says regional towns will be the worst hit with 12 branches to close at 4.30pm and 16 not opening until 9am. Herald Sun has a photo of the Western Bulldogs celebrating their win over the GWS Giants last night. It's the first time the team has made an AFL grand final in 55 years. The Sunday Age also features the Bulldogs as well as a story about Victorian Labor MP Jane Garrett and the CFA dispute. The Western Bulldogs win is also on the front page of the Sunday Tasmanian with the headline Dare to Dream. The paper also looks at today's GST story with the Prime Minister confirming a recent proposal to change the GST carve-up is on ice. 
And the Sunday Territorian has an image of Territory man Kevin Reid with his wife on their wedding day. Mr Reid was shot dead after he was approached by three men while out walking with his wife in the United States. He's been labelled a hero for protecting her during the robbery attempt. Solomon Islands police are preparing to resume full responsibility for law and order in their country. But first, they have to undergo intensive training to win their government's approval to once again carry firearms. It is a vital move before Australian police leave the islands next year, but not everyone is happy that officers are going to be armed once again. This is part of the training for firing a police weapon. These Solomon Islands police officers are preparing to carry firearms for the first time in 13 years. Our focus mainly is on the safety of the firearm because it's, it's like a new thing to us. The weapons will only be used to respond to gun crime, riots and to comply with international security requirements for Honiara's airport. The firearms will be tightly controlled. They'll only be uh, uh, issued when there's a specific need. Officers are also being trained in the use of other non-lethal weapons. Police have been running a community education campaign about rearming their officers. But because some of the violence that shut down the Solomon Islands was committed by police, there are lingering concerns about them once again carrying weapons. I don't think it's the right time and that the police are mature enough or in the right set of mind. Since the tensions a large proportion of the force has been replaced and Australian police have conducted extensive training. Not only were police implicated in some of the violence of the tensions, their armoury was raided for weapons. That's something they're determined won't happen again. A new high-tech armoury has been built to store the weapons. Compared to what we had in the past, I think this is the most uh, secure uh, equipment that we have. The firearms won't be issued to officers until the Solomon Islands government gives permission, but it's a step that's likely to happen before foreign police leave the country in the middle of next year. Eric Torchek, ABC News, Honiara.